Hey everyone, Mr. Newman here, and today we're going to learn about creating equations uh, from word problems that are more complicated equations. Before we just did one step, but you guys did them so well, I'm optimistic that you guys will do this one well too. Um, so just a reminder, the three steps stay the same. The first thing we always want to do is define your, the variable, and remember that um, we need to pick a letter and we need to say what it means. And if you're looking for what it means, you should look at the question, because usually what the question is asking for is what the variable means. Um, as far as picking a letter, the letter um, doesn't, uh, it can be anything, okay? So you can't get that part wrong, but what you can get wrong is saying what it means or forgetting to do it. Uh, then you're gonna write an equation using your words. Now the words I'm talking about are from that sheet. Uh, it's on a pre previous video notes, that's why we hold on to our notes. I think it was 2.1. And things like of means multiply, sum means add, total can mean add, and greater than can mean subtract. So um, you are more than, you want to look that up and you can reference that if you've forgotten some of those. Lastly, you're going to solve for the variable and answer in a complete sentence. One of the tips for step two that I'm going to show you how to do on one of these at least is to write the, rewrite the problem in your own words. And you'll see if you rewrite it in your own words, a lot of times it makes more sense than the convoluted, complex wording that uh, the problem shows. So, let me do a few examples and then I'll give you some to do on your own. Uh, first of all, we want to find the variable. I underlined the question because it said, how much did each notebook cost? Let's read it. Huang had 26 to spend on six notebooks. After buying them, she had $11. How much did each notebook cost? Well, each notebook cost is the variable because that's what we're looking for. So in, I just made in be the cost of a notebook. And now I'm gonna rewrite this sentence because if Wong started with $23, then, uh, and ended up with $11, that means $11 and six notebooks makes a total of $23. $11 was what was left over, but if you add that to the cost of six notebooks, that should add up to $23. It makes $23. So the and and the makes, and uh, we're going to talk about each in just a moment, um, and had, those are the keywords that we see. And so I'm going to start with 11. The word and means add. Now six notebooks. I'm looking for the cost of six notebooks. So I'm going to do six times n. And I just realized I did an uppercase n and a lowercase n. It's a good idea to always keep that the same. So let's make my initial one, a lowercase n. It's okay if you have one of each, because I know I already messed up and wrote that. But um, six notebooks, six times how many notebooks you have. Um, no, sorry, six times the cost of each notebook shows you the total cost of all the notebooks. Then makes means add, and, or means equals, and you get $23. So $11 and six notebooks should equal $23. There's our equation, let's just solve it. You subtract 11 from both sides and you divide by six and we get n equals two, that means two dollars. So each notebook costs two dollars and you should write that out as a sentence. You just wanna check and make sure that makes sense. If each notebook is two dollars and we're buying six of them, that should be $12 of notebooks. $12 and $11 makes $23, so that makes sense in terms of our sentence. Now, for this next one, I'm not gonna write a separate summary sentence, though if you liked that from a previous time, I would highly recommend it. Um, instead, I'm gonna show you, because you can set this up slightly differently. Um, in this case, Shanice has $20 to spend on seven raffle tickets. After buying them, she has $6. How much did each raffle ticket cost? So if R is the cost of the raffle ticket, then what I wanna do is I wanna circle my keywords, so had after buying in each, um, $20, is what she had, so we're gonna start with that, $20. Had means equals, so, or sorry, had um, does not mean equals, sorry. Seven raffle tickets is the next thing, but she spent the money on seven raffle, raffle tickets, so she lost money. And if R is the cost of each raffle, that should be seven R is what the cost of all seven raffle tickets. So she spent that money, meaning she lost it. I should really circle that one too, here we go. Spend, she spent seven raffle, tickets are after buying them is the other way buying makes subtraction then she had that's this one she had six dollars okay and how much did each raffle will take it cost each suggests that we should multiply and sure enough that's why that multiplication happens right there seven times R because each raffle ticket costs uh, R dollars so um, 
Now we can just solve this. That is our equation. Subtract 20 from both sides. Make sure you have negative 7r equals negative 14. Divide by negative 7, and you get r equals 2 again. So the cost of each raffle ticket is $2, and that makes sense in terms of that equation. Each raffle ticket costs $2. Go ahead, pause the video, and I want you to try that next problem now that you, you try. All right. Now that you've finished that, I've got a tricky phrase here. This is if the word half or third or quarter comes up or anything like that. Um, we need to know what that looks like in the equation. So it says, the other funny thing is with how many did she begin? Um, I'm gonna define that variable as C and that's just how many comic books Beth started with, how many she, yeah, how many she began with, how many she started with, okay? So um, Beth sold half of her comic books and then bought nine more. So let's circle these. First of all, she sold half. She started with C and then she sold half of them, that's gonna look like this, C times one half. If she then bought nine more, that means she's gonna add nine. So rewind, if she sold half, I can multiply that by half because that's how many she had left. She sold half and she kept half, okay? She then bought nine more, so that's plus nine, and she now has, that's equals 28. There is our equation and we just have to solve for C. So subtract nine from both sides. C times one half is 19. I'm gonna undo the one half by multiplying by two. This is a little bit tricky for some students. They're like, wait, 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 shouldn't we divide by half? Well, dividing by half is the same as multiplying by two. So I just like writing it more easily because it's easier than having to type that in the calculator. I can do 19 times two in my head, but I gotta think more about 19 divided by half. So two, the other way to look at it is two times a half is one, so that's why I cross those out. They divide out, and so you get C equals 19 times two, or 38. Uh, so that means that Beth started with 38 comic books, and you wanna write that out in a complete sentence. Go ahead and try the next one that uses the word half again there, remember? Uh, and you can think about, uh, yeah, what, what is the variable, is it how you wanna start? Um, now, I'm gonna do the last one. This is a tricky one, but I wanna show you guys another strategy is to draw a picture. And sometimes it's hard to draw a picture of a variable because you don't know how many there are, and I'll show you how to do that. So, how many pies did the club make is the question. So I'm gonna make P be the number of pies made by the club. Um, let's just read it real quick. The cooking club made some pies to sell at a basketball game to raise money for the new math books. The cafeteria contributed two pies to the sale. Each pie was then cut into six pieces and sold. So that's the cooking club's pies and the cafeteria's pies were cut into six pieces. And there were a total of 60 pieces. So our equation is gonna revolve around the 60 pieces. First of all, let me underline the cafeteria contributing two pies, and I'm gonna draw two pies for the cafeteria. Next, the cooking club contributed pies, but I don't know how many pies they contributed. So I'm gonna draw this. I'm gonna draw some pies. I'm gonna put dot, 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 and draw another pie. And they're actually P pies, um, but I don't know how many that is. So I'm just gonna leave that dot, dot, dot like there so I can visualize it. Um, lastly, we know that uh, they were cut into six, and that's both the cafeteria pies and the cooking club pies. Let's cut those all into six. And um, the total of 60 pieces means that we're gonna add all those pieces, all those cuts together, and it should add 60. So let me write equals 60 there at the end, a total of 60 pieces. And let's see, uh, look at the picture to figure out how many pieces there are. Well, there are 12 pieces from the cafeteria, and there are six pieces per pie in from the cooking club. So I'm gonna add six times the number of pies, six P, okay? Six slices for each pie, and P is the number of pies. So six P is how many slices there are in all of these, okay? I don't know exactly what how many that is, but I know it's 6p. Uh, now, we got our equation and we can just solve. Subtract 12 from both sides, 6p equals 48. Divide by six and p is eight. That means the cooking club made eight pies. All right, I want you to try this next one and I would highly, highly recommend drawing a picture kind of like I have. You can draw it into, um, you can draw it in, in pies just like I did, draw the, draw the thing there. All right, now that uh, you finished that, because you guys paused it, let, I want you to try this last one as well. And uh, uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a good day.